so this was uh, twenty early twenty twenty. Um, that is very recent. We recorded this in twenty twenty three for all of you watching. No, nope, nope. twenty twenty four. We're only we are, four months in. Yeah, we so we recorded this in St. Louis in twenty <laughs> year twenty three. <laughs> Jeff, you are on fire. <laughs> Jumanji. Yes. Jumanji. What year is this? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's okay, Jeff. It's all right. We got you. There's we got no you. no airflow in here. <laughs> <laughs> My brain is melting. That's what good. year yeah. is this? <laughs> Hello, Beatitudes, and welcome to a Friday episode where my voice almost cracked on the (laughs) show. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I warmed up my voice, but not at that register. Wow. Uh, Thank you for that, Jeff. (laughs) Welcome to the the Beatitudes, a podcast for Christian men seeking to grow in holiness as we learn from each other and walk arm in arm in authentic fraternity on our way to eternity. My name is Paul Kolker, and I am joined, as always, by my co-hosts, Nicholas Besner. What's going on? And Jeffrey Sheffelbean. We don't just learn from each other, we learn for each other. That's, yes, that's <laughs> it. I don't know how that works, but somehow. Sacrificial. It, it makes sense. <laughs> Learning. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, mystical body of Christ. It's at Amen. that level. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. And we're back for the bonus episode with none other than the head of Shepherd's Clothing. That's the correct name, right? Shepherd's? The Shepherd's, yeah. Or oh, just Shepherd's. Shepherds. Okay, yeah. yes. Uh, but it is a clothing brand. Uh, uh, Made to measure and all that good stuff. Check those guys out at wearshepherds.com. But we are joined again by Chris Cottrell. Welcome back. Thank you so much. Yeah, glad to have you again. Made to work on my voice. <laughs> Welcome and back. Now, this, this. Is, this is the walk on song I always imagined. <laughs> <laughs> Little League, this is what I would have picked. It's you in slow motion. It's, it's me in slow motion. Yeah. Staring at the outfit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a third <laughs> inning. <laughs> Nothing important is happening. <laughs> Why is Chris in slow motion? (laughs) Awesome. Dramatic little kid out there. Everybody's like, go go faster. (laughs) He's going to be somebody (laughs) when he gets there. Uh, Uh, Speaking of getting there, we want to hear about you getting there to your faith. Mm, good. That was that was pretty that good. That was good. I give that like a seven on your normal transition scale. Maybe there. even an eight. Yeah, maybe an eight. I'm, I'm gonna make a suggestion for Beatitudes. Oh. You need scorecards. Oh. So when, when this transition happens, you can you know it's just, it's a six. I like that. Yeah, and it's a zero. Just one person the... has to have them. Nobody <laughs> yeah. else. Zero from the Russian judge. <laughs> I'm very self conscious, and yeah. it's very hard for me to put myself out there. So I'm not so sure it's about tough. this. That's real, real tough for you. You're yeah. also a terrible liar. Yeah. <laughs> I got y'all earlier yeah. on the last show when I said that I didn't talk to his business partner, but I did. No, I don't, I don't think any of us believe. No. I didn't believe it. <laughs> no. I was sold. He, he I was one hundred percent sold. Welcome to the Jeff world. Yes, <laughs> the Jeff show. We we've spent enough time around you to know better. <laughs> uh, hey, so you obviously have like a strong faith background. It's how we got connected through our friend at Catholic Vote, running shepherds, doing all this other great work, launching a search fund. Um, connected to some great men, great influencers, great Catholic leaders. But talk to us about your faith journey, where you were kind of brought up, and what does that look like in the arc of your life coming into adulthood? Yeah, so I'm a, I'm a pretty recent convert, actually. Um, I think a lot of Catholics who meet me, because I'm you know plugged into a lot of stuff that's going on in the Catholic world, don't think that. But uh, my parents had a reversion to the faith when I was um, probably a year and a half, two years old. Did you hold out? At one and a half or two years old? <laughs> I needed, yeah. <laughs> this is, I was very so very skeptical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> that's a live recording of me from, yeah. yeah. Um, we'll play it back. <laughs> I refuse. <laughs> I refuse. <laughs> Sorry, I had a Celsius before this. Please. <laughs> I see that. <laughs> Let's keep going. It needs to be someone's ringtone for, uh, <laughs> for you. <laughs> yeah. We can make that happen. Yeah, make me happen. Um, no, I I remember, you know, the, the Protestant version of salvation is uh, you pray the sinner's prayer. And I, I did that uh, both, I think, at, at you know, three or four years old, but also just in case several times <laughs> along the way, <laughs> in case it didn't stick. Um, but I was raised in 90s evangelical, you know, cultural Christianity. So we um, attended church every Sunday. My parents were very devout. Um, fast forward to, um, I was about nine or ten, and... We were going to major church, uh, a major ter- church in Texas, and one of the uh, staffers um, ended up uh, 
molesting two of my mm. sisters. Um, and it was obviously very tough for the whole church. It was tough for my siblings, of course, for my parents. Um, and over the, the following 10 years or so, um, I think in, in some way or another, my parents, my siblings, me, wrestled with the faith. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So they've, they, they all have uh, pretty different beliefs now. Um, and I, it wasn't really until I got to D.C. that I met uh, faithful Catholics. So growing up, I knew a few, but they were not faithful, um, and they didn't have good answers for things. Uh, my questions about Catholicism by the Protestants were answered with mythology about, you know, the crucifix and why Christ is on the cross there, or praying to Mary. Um, and then one of my closest friends converted. Um, he was the son of a Baptist minister in Virginia, uh, and I also started dating a, a Catholic gal. So those two things really confronted to me, or made, forced me to confront, um, you know, what am I protesting? What exactly is it about Catholicism that I, I don't agree with? Um, and there were the things that I didn't understand. And as I started pressing in and asking questions, um, the beauty of the Mass really stood out, the structure of that. Um, and then I, I had another convert friend who pointed out to me, you know, every time I've, I of course, had an Excel sheet of... <laughs> <laughs> Buddy. <laughs> objections. <laughs> Buddy. <laughs> Do we just become best friends? <laughs> Lay it. Uh, of my... Uh, you Lay know, it out there. And the Catholic position and the Protestant position... And my, you know, the convert friend pointed out to me, well, every time you refer to Scripture, um, you're referring to the authority of the Catholic Church. Where in Scripture is the canon? And it kind of you know, struck me like a bolt of lightning. And that argument, I think really, every time I came back to, well, I don't understand this or I don't understand that, um, won out because like, well, I wouldn't have the Scripture without the Church's authority to say this is Scripture and that stuff is not. So anything that I disagreed on or didn't understand in, in Catholic doctrine, uh, I was wrong. Well, so in quick context for people who aren't yeah. aware, the canon is the list of accepted books yeah. for Scripture. Yeah. Because there are apocryphal Gospels by the Gospel of Thomas and other things that at least claim to be the story of Christ. And right. these are the, the ones that the Church said, no, th- well, there's, there's a variety of criteria, but these have apostolic origin and these uh, point to a universal life of holiness and I mean those kinds of criteria that they then discerned and declared mm-hmm. that these are the books you can tell who went to seminary for <laughs> yes. you, I was just about to say those were word for word Paul we could have we'll do that on the next reverse Nick and I were talking about that pocket full of gospels that never made it to <laughs> just learned that we should, I don't know what that is we we I I want to kind of want to make that like a board game or pocket something. Full of <laughs> pocket full of gospels. <laughs> it's all the other writings that never made it. Yep, that's it. Oh my gosh! No, the apocryphal. <laughs> Correct. Got it. Got it. Just to be clear. Yeah. Um, so this was uh, twenty early twenty twenty. Um, that is very recent. We recorded this in 2023 for all of you watching nope, this. No, nope. 2024. <laughs> <laughs> We're only yeah. four months in. Yeah, we, t- we recorded this in St. Louis in, 20 <laughs> in the year 2023. 2023. <laughs> <laughs> Go Good. back and watch the previous episode to get <laughs> no. that reference. No. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Jeff, you are on fire. <laughs> Jumanji. Yes. Jumanji. What year is it? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's okay, Jeff. It's all right. We got you. There's we got no you. There's no airflow in here. <laughs> <laughs> My brain is melting. That's what yeah. is yeah. it? <laughs> Chris is going to be like, Chris. man, that was that was an experience. I don't know what happened. Yeah. I don't know if it was it. a good one, <laughs> but, but I, I was there for it. it. Happened. Chris is like, I think every business they run is fake. <laughs> <laughs> it's all a shell corporation. <laughs> Uh, All you need is a podcast, and it's real. That's yeah, it. It's real. Yep. Legitimate. It's real. Yeah. Too legitimate to quit him it. And so, so we get to the 20s. Yeah. So 2020. in 2020, um, I'd started attending Mass, um, and there was a particular hymn by uh, St. John Henry Newman, um, Lead Thou Me On, and I I think it captured, and I just remember listening to it frequently. There's a line in there where he says, um, I used to choose and see my path, but now lead thou me on. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I'm not one to to over spiritualize uh, a particular experience but i just remember when i was like 4 30 in the morning walking to the gym and i hear that in my headphones and i just like clicked yeah and i went from one step i was like i, I really don't know to the next step going i, I am 100 percent gonna become catholic become catholic wow um so i 
moved up my initial confirmation out of Easter um, to, um, this was late February in 2020 because I was deploying. Um, actually, uh, my deployment order started on April 23rd, mm-hmm. which is also, it's today. Um, and also the feast day of my patron saint, St. George. Oh, awesome. Uh, which was just such a cool, um, again, a sign after sign from the Lord of Happy of Feast Day. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, Thank happy you. feast. I was actually trying to figure out if it's my own feast day or just the feast day of your, your patron. You know what we say here? Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> but I'm sure somebody will hit us up in the yes, comments. Please, probably let Christopher me know. will I hope they yeah. do. break that down. I hope yeah. you tell yeah. us. We're I would love to know. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, converted and then two weeks later went on pilgrimage to, to Jerusalem. Yes. So, you know, nine of my first ten masses were <laughs> in the Holy Land, which is, I couldn't have, have picked a better, again, signs from the Lord of uh, you're headed the right direction. Just a beautiful trip. Um, and then I deployed right away and went for uh, four and a half months on the beginning and then four and a half months on the back end without, without the mass. Wow. I was able to go to, to Baghdad uh, and have one mass from a NATO priest. Um, and I felt it was in a language I didn't understand with people who spoke another language I didn't understand, but I knew what was happening yep. in the mass. Yep. And that was so beautiful um, and just felt to you know, be able to take the Eucharist and uh, what an incredible thing to, to for uh, just a gift from the Lord. Amen. When my wife converted in some year that nobody will ever know. 2023. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this year. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 2010. When she converted in 2010, two weeks later, we were in the Holy Land together on our pilgrimage. So no kidding. the experience you're describing, she had a lot of that same, like, kind of eyes wide open. Like, people were like, isn't this great? And she's like, I have no idea what this is. I'm, like, yeah. so new to this. I can't keep up. But still, it was very powerful and, and a yeah. great time for us to connect. Yeah. Um, how did, uh, if you may share, going through a conversion, your family has major trauma and all of that's, um, you know, deep wounds that never are truly like gone. I mean, mm-hmm. we're, we're all in the process of whatever wounds we were, we were raised into. Um, how does your family like look at your Catholicism? Is there any friction in that or is there joy in that? What does that look like? Yeah. That's a deep question. It I'm is hard to hit you with that. You can no, say it's pass. A, it's a good question. Um, I think the person I was most nervous to tell uh, was my aunt. Mm-hmm. Um, she's effectively, she pretty much raised my mom. Um, and has been kind of my, my grandmother figure for my whole life. Um, and she's, she's Protestant and an ardent Protestant. Um, and I told her and she said, you know, I'd known one Catholic and she was really faithful. And so she kind of gave me her blessing on it. Which was a, just a huge deal for me to be able to. That's emotional. To yeah. do that, yeah. It was, yeah, it was like, very emotional. Um, and yeah, it's a, you know, nobody, no, no young man wants to let their grandmother down. Um, and so she was, but this, the point of that story is to say it was someone else that paved that, another faithful Catholic that paved that path yeah. for her to be able mm. to, to see my conversion in a good mm. light. Yeah. Online today, I had, you know, posted about a novena starting for St. Peregrine and it ends on May 1st. And I was asking people to pray for my son. I mean, this is the patron saint of cancer. My sock religious socks are on the way, by the way. <laughs> I reached out to nice. Scott. And um, this guy responds back and he says, look, I'm not Catholic, so I don't get this part about praying for saints, but thanks for asking about the praying with saints, but thanks for asking for my prayers. Count on them. And I said, mm. what you're doing for me is exactly what I'm asking for holy men and women to do for me because mm. you and I would agree that our God is a God of the living and that those who have passed on from the earthly body are actually on a pathway, if not already, all the way into the sanctification of heaven and and uh, eternity with our Lord. And so I'm just asking them and you to pray together for me and for my son. And he was like, right. actually, that makes a lot of sense. This dude's 80, had never heard this before. Mm. So your part about like, could a Catholic just say one thing once that helps somebody to understand something that they've been grappling mm. with or they think is wrong? Or if a Catholic will mention Jesus, people are like, well, I thought you were a Catholic. <laughs> 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 yep. <laughs> We've heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> He's kind of a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think that's beautiful. Well, th- I'm pr- first of all, welcome to the church uh, as Thank recently you. as some Thank year you. that was yeah. um, not too long ago. <laughs> <laughs> Three years by your count. Yeah. yeah. And then um, <laughs> I guess w- when you think about your Catholic faith, what is, th- I'm just going to throw you a real easy one. What's your relationship with the Eucharist? Hmm. <laughs> The simple ones, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, um, 
in the in the the mass where I was confirmed, um, I lost it when you say, um, "Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my under my roof, but uh, just say the word, my soul shall be healed." And that is the difference. That's the relationship with the Eucharist that I think Catholics are so blessed uh, to have and understand, um, and that specific, unique presence of Christ there with you and your unworthiness simultaneously. Mm. Those are the two things. I love every bit of that. Yeah. Well, good. Well, listen, I want people to just know how to uh, follow along with everything you got going on. Whereshepherds.com. Right. Not looking for them, but putting them on. So whereshepherds. Yeah. Dot com, right? That's right. W-E-R-R. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, while you're at it, go to the Beatitudes at a website slash the <laughs> Beatitudes <laughs> underscore. Uh, <What>? Subscribe. <laughs> YouTube.com go on. slash yep. at the underscore Beatitudes. And if you're watching it there, then go over to Spotify and subscribe to us there too. Sure. Oh, yeah. And give us a positive rating and review on uh, Apple, iTunes, all that good stuff too. We have some good ones down there. And yeah. But we want more people the to more find the us. The more the merrier. Yeah. And i got to say, these yeah. two that we've done with Chris, the Monday show and this bonus show, are two really good ones. You Thank you. You are um, a well-structured man, as your business partner has declared. Um, you are thoughtful and spreadsheet-based, which has made <laughs> Nick's heart sing. I love sing. it. And speaking of singing, you weren't afraid of singing on the last episode, which was another uh, <laughs> tug of the Holy Spirit to get out of your comfort zone. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But most of all, you've been asking the questions for yourself on this journey that we're all on. And I think it's so cool that there's people who want to emulate and follow along in the steps that you're having from business and in everything we're seeing from Shepherds with all the online work with Harrison Butker, with everything that's going on. So you are a light in the world, my friend, not to be put under a bushel or a basket or a bushel <laughs> basket. Well, thank you all so much for having me. I'm certainly not the, uh, not the only light in this room doing good things. So thank, thank you, you all for, uh, for having me here. Sweetness. All right, my friends, we uh, appreciate you and we are going to see you at whereshepherds.com. And for the rest of you, we will see see you in the Eucharist. God bless you, gentlemen. Thanks for tuning in. If you'd like to join us at our undersized table, subscribe to the video version of the show on YouTube by typing at, that's the symbol at, so shift and two on your keyboard, at the underscore Beatitudes on YouTube. We'll see you there.